In one of our previous videos, we looked at how we can use Billship's OpenAI Assistant to easily chat with the data stored in a Superbase hosted table. But now, what if we want to be able to chat with multiple tables? And what if we want to give our Assistant the ability to perform other database operations? How cool would it be if we could just tell our Assistant to insert a new record for us in natural language? Or likewise, to update an existing record? Well, luckily for us, creating a powerful database Assistant like this is made easy thanks to Billship. It's easy to talk. So let's see a working demo. Here we have a Billship workflow and it's using Billship's OpenAI Assistant node. And here we're giving our assistant the ability to use two tools. Our assistant will be able to use the fetch table schema tool to fetch the data structure of any table we query. And our second tool, SQL query, will come in handy once our assistant has generated a SQL query relative to the prompt we send and the table schema it was able to fetch. Now let's put our assistant to work. We'll go to test and we'll send a prompt. Please add a new user for me, John Doe, and his email is john at example.com. We'll test the workflow. And after a few seconds, our assistant has notified us that it has successfully inserted our new user. Let's verify this. Here we have our Superbase table users. And at the bottom, we can see that John at example.com has been inserted. Just how amazing is that? Now it goes without saying that the opportunities for this are endless. And guess what? We're going to show you how to build this in just four easy steps. In Billship, you'll find a number of templates available to help you get started creating your own assistant. Our first step will be to clone the database query assistant template. We've included some sample prompts that you can use to test out the assistant. But before we can get to that, we need to set up our template. For step two, let's start configuring the OpenAI assistant node. The first thing we'll enter here is our API key. We'll go to secrets and we'll select OpenAI. If you don't already have your OpenAI API key saved in bill ship, then you can just go to the OpenAI console and get it from the API key section. And while we're still in the OpenAI console, the next thing we need to do is get an assistant ID. So we'll go to the assistance page and we already have created an assistant that we want to use. But if you don't have one, then you can easily create one. The only thing you need to do here is enter a name for your assistant and select the GPT model you want to use. You don't have to enable any tools here because we're going to be doing this in Billship. So we'll go to our assistant and we'll copy the assistant ID. We'll go back to Billship and we'll paste that value here. And as we're setting up our assistant, it's important for us to put enough thought into the system prompt we give the assistant. We need to make sure we clearly instruct our assistant to use the tools we give it. Let's look at the instructions we're using here. We're telling the assistant that it has all the knowledge about all the various tables inside of my Postgres database. And we will ask various questions regarding the tables inside of this database. And we wanted to construct valid SQL statements. The important part here is that we're telling our assistant that we will be giving it two tools to use and it must follow the guidelines of each tool. The first guideline is that it must use the fetch table schema node to find out the structure of the table being queried. And the second guideline is that it should use the SQL query node to execute the query it generates and then return the results. The last bit of instruction we are giving our assistant is for our own safety. So for any volatile operations such as delete, we want the assistant to ask for confirmation first. So depending on your use case and requirements, this is where you will customize how you want your assistant to operate based on the tools you give it. User prompt will be our message to the assistant. If we look at the value being passed here, it's using a prompt field that we're extracting from the request body. For this demo, we're going to be skipping over thread ID, but if you're looking to maintain conversation history, then you should pass one of your thread ID here. We're also not going to be using none of the built-in tools for this demo because we're going to be supplying our own tools. Step three, let's focus on the tools and actions we're giving our assistant. The great thing about using Billship's OpenAI assistant node is that you can use any of the Billship pre-built nodes as tools for your assistant. 
What does that mean, you ask? Well, as you can see, right now we're using two tools. But these are actually nodes from the Billship library. If we scroll down to the Postgres group, we'll be able to see these nodes here. So that means that if you want, you can use any of the nodes that Billship provides as tools for your own assistant. In this demo, we're just working with Postgres, but if you want, you can work with MySQL as well, MongoDB, or maybe you want to create an assistant for managing data inside of Google Sheets, then you can do that as well. And don't forget, if you're trying to use use a tool in the form of a node that isn't already available in the Billship library, then you can just generate your own with AI. With Billship, there's no limitation. Now we need to start configuring our tools. We need to provide our database credentials so that our assistant will be able to communicate with the tables we query. Our database is hosted on Superbase, but it's important to mention that these two nodes are platform agnostic. So if you have your Postgres database hosted somewhere else, then it should still work as long as you're providing the correct credentials. To get our database host, we'll head back to Superbase and we'll go to Project Settings. From Project Settings, we'll go to Database and here's the database host, so we'll copy this. We'll head back to Billship, we'll paste this value here. Next, we need to get our database name. We'll copy it, go back to Billship and paste. Then we need to get our user, so we'll just copy the user, head back to Billship and paste the user. Lastly, we already have our database password stored as a secret. So we'll just go to secrets and select it. Now, all that remains to be filled is table name. But notice how the star icon next to this table name input is highlighted. What this means is that this input will be autofilled by the assistant. This brings us to another interesting feature of using Billship's OpenAI Assistant. So based on our user prompt, the assistant will be able to intelligently autofill this with the table name we're querying. If we click this icon to autofill, the way this works is that we need to provide good descriptions about the input. For example, here the input name is table name. And for the input description, we're letting the assistant know that this is supposed to take the name of the table for which to fetch the schema. We're also telling it that it should try and follow well-known and accepted conventions for table name. For example, pluralized table names. And once we give our assistant description about our input, then it will be able to autofill this for us. And why is this useful? Well, because we want to be able to operate with multiple tables and not just hard code this to users, for example. So having the assistant autofill this value will allow us to operate with any tables inside of our database. After our assistant fetches the schema of the table being queried, the next thing it will do is try and generate an SQL query relative to the prompt we're passing. And once it has generated this SQL query, it will move on to the SQL query node to execute the query. Now we just need to configure this second tool the same way we did with the first. We'll go back to our previous node and we'll copy the database host and we'll just paste it here. Next, we'll copy the database name and paste it as well. The same for username. And then for the password, we'll just select it from our secrets. Our final input here, which is the SQL query we want to execute, will also be autofilled by the assistant. The power we're unlocking by giving our assistant these two tools to use is that our assistant will be able to operate on any tables in our database with any given operation we want to perform. So that means that we can read, write, update, and even delete from any tables we want. The final node in our workflow is to simply return the response from our assistant. And just like that, we've arrived at step four, where we can deploy our workflow and start testing our assistant. First, we'll ship our workflow. Great, our workflow is now shipped. And now we can start testing our assistant against some of these sample prompts. In the beginning of the video, we already saw how we could insert a new user. So let's try this prompt. Give me five latest users. To start, we'll go to test, switch to the body tab. And for the prompt, we'll paste this value. And now for the moment of truth, let's test the workflow. Great, so after a few seconds, we get back our result. Here are the five latest users, and immediately we can see the latest user is John Doe, which is correct because as you can recall, this is the user we inserted at the beginning of the video. To further understand how this is working, let's inspect the logs of the assistant. 
will view logs. When we send our prompt, the first thing that the assistant will do is execute a fetch table schema node slash tool. If we try and inspect the previous logs, we can see that the assistant will autofill the table name input with users. And then if we continue down, we can see that the next thing our assistant will do after fetching the table schema is execute our SQL query node. And if we dive in and further inspect the logs, then we'll be able to see the SQL query that the assistant generated for us based on the prompt we sent. So remember, in our prompt, we said, give me five latest users. And if we look here, the query that was generated is select everything from users, order by created at in descending order, and limit to only five. So that was pretty accurate. Now let's try some more examples. Let's go back to test in body and let's update our prompt. And this time let's perform an update operation. So we'll say update the user John Doe set his bio to loves eating too much. Now let's test the assistant again. And finally, our assistant has notified us that the bio for John Doe has been updated to loves eating too much. Now let's verify this in Superbase. Let's look for John Doe and we can see that his bio has indeed been updated to loves eating too much. Perfect. But now we've come to the conclusion that we no longer want John Doe to be part of our user base. So we'll delete his account. We'll update our prompt and we'll say delete John Doe. Let's test the workflow. And would you look at that? Our assistant is following the instructions we gave it that if we want to perform a volatile operation such as delete, then it needs to ask us for confirmation. This is a very important detail to keep in mind because you don't want to give your assistant too much control over your database and you definitely don't want to be reckless with the data you have stored. And this is good because maybe we've had a change of heart and we no longer want to delete John Doe. Now let's try one more example and this time we're going to be querying from a different table. In our Superbase database, we have a contacts table with just two entries. So in Billship, we'll go back to update our prompt. And for the prompt, we'll say, give me only the name of my contacts. Let's test. Nice. We get back Louis Rudd and John Doe. As always, we can verify. Louis Raj and John Doe is correct. This showcases the ability that our assistant is capable of interacting with multiple tables. And this is all made possible because we're using the fetch table schema node as a tool for our assistant. As always, if you're curious, you can always inspect the logs to view what SQL the assistant generates for you. So in this example, we can see that the generated SQL query is select name from contacts, which is dead on because we only wanted to select the name field from our contacts table. And that's how by using Billship, you can build your very own database management assistant. One which you can use to operate on your database in natural human language and in the process, reducing the need for you having to write SQL queries. And that's as far as we'll go today. But while you're still here, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot of AI based content coming soon and you're not going to want to miss out on any of them. And remember, we love Love hearing your feedback and ideas so please feel free to share them with us in the comments that's all we have for now and we look forward to seeing you in the next video until then happy bill shipping